Right then, we're back. Tonight's going to be an easy one, hopefully. Well, yeah, it will be, to be sure, but it can't go that bad. I just need to know the audio is working before we go ahead and look into these. And we'll play some originals out to some better springs, basically in shops. So if someone could just let me know in the chat if the audio is working, that'd be great. Should be a lot better tonight. So I'll just wait um, to make sure the audio is working while we run through these. I posted the link already um, in the description. It should be there somewhere. If not, then the guys will fill you in. Um, they're taking 110 more original shots to 125 more. Aftermarket shocks, rated for 175 pounds in weight. Um, yeah, they should be a lot better than the originals. So let me just check to make sure the audio is working. Back with you. Any more if I need to go up or down, lads? That'd be great. Mm, it seems uh, I know the audio is working. I'll kick off. I'm going to start taking these two bolts off first. And I've got another camera rigged up so you can look down at the side view so you can see what's going on behind. Um, yeah, I'll take you from there. So, anyone, just give me an A for an audio in the chat, anything at all. And I'll get some tools ready while we're here. You can use the tools that's in your kit provided. So that's nice and easy. There's nothing extra to purchase, tool wise. You don't need a spanner, an adjustable, a decent one. The longer the better, it makes the work easier. Make sure this audio is working before we carry on. I don't fancy redoing this, it's another nightmare. So, anyone? There's a few of you there, but. Let me know if the audio is working. I'll tell you what, I'll check myself. <coughs> Let me just confirm the audio is working myself a second. Someone let me know in the chat if the, if the mic's working. Anything will do, just give me a full stop. I don't want to just crack on, get halfway through, and then no one's understood anything because there's no microphone. Hi, right, Pete. Any audio, mate? Can you hear anything on the mic? Let me know if you can't start and crack on. Anything will do, mate, just a thumbs up or something. Oh, cool. Damn it. Took a while to get that through. Right then, we'll crack on. Whoa. 
Let me get up. First thing we're going to need is the M5 Allen bolt from the tool key, uh, from the tool kit. We're going to take this one off and this one off. This one's nice and easy because there's no bolt on the other side. We'll look at that in a minute because I'm not happy there's no bolt the other side of both sides. But anyway, let me see counterclockwise if the scooter's facing forward. Careful because if you undo one side, then go on to the other, the scooter's going to drop because there's nothing holding it upright. So let me just make sure. Cool. Alright, let's take this one all the way out. And we'll size these new shocks up and see if they fit. Obviously, look at it, no, they're not going to fit. I'm expecting the ride height to be jacked up, but when you put the weight on it, you should level itself back out. So I'm not too concerned. Right. What we got? First bolt out. Leaves us with just the bolt, the shock, then a spacer, the dampener this is actually, and then a spacer behind. So that's nothing too heavy. That's just with one bolt. We'll put that to the side. We can let go of that. I'll move out of the way a second. Get a good look at the frame now, at least the back swing arm. Next one's going to be this one. Now to get that one in, there's a bolt on the other side. Let me see if I can get this other camera to work for you. And then you get to see it from both sides. Let me just turn the other camera on. There you go. It's all shaky cam. cam. Right. right. Left front. Left uh, front view on as well in the window. I'm not, not sure, sure if this cam's any good. Right, right so we're going to take this bolt off next. I thought it'd be best if you could see from all angles. Rather than I mean, just blabber on the boss on the back. So that probably, probably was a good call. call. Yeah, no, no concerns with those boom. That's you when you're soldering. Right. So, so as I was saying, that bolt's at the back. That bolt's you find exactly, exactly the same as that one was there. So I'm going to put the camera back down and then do these two. You can see where I'm gripping all the on this side now, on both sides. Right, let's grab it with something. You can use an adjustable spanner, a pair of mole grips, a pair of vice grips, as long as you've got something to grab with. You just want to hold on to the bolt. It's going to be an issue if you've still got the bracket on for your seat mount. Um, you've got to come at this sort of angle basically just to get into the lip of the seat mount. It's easy, it's not achievable. So we'll just grab onto that and then take this one out. Again, it's anti clockwise. Just try not to drop down the table. Good news is there's no locking thread, um, no Loctite on yet because he uses a nylon nut. So I'm going to worry too much about that. Alright, what we got? The nut from the other side. A longer bolt than the first one we took out. Let's say that's. What's that? 17 mil. And there's a little space there as well. So there's the old. Um, I've, the only reason I'm changing them is I've noticed they're about, let me see, two months old these. They, they've started to bottom out and bleed. And you can actually see the marks where they're not doing what they're supposed to do. They're sort of collapsing on each other rather than compressing in and out. And that's the whole point of the system is to compress in and out, not bend back and forth. And that feels absolutely awful. I don't know if you can hear this. That's not good. So we'll stick that on. <laughs> no quick glance at the chat a second, because this is going well. This is going well. No echo. I know I've been working on that. I paid the money. So hopefully the sound's better than ever. The cameras are getting better, the setup will be more permanent, 
and wait till I show you the batteries. I've got something on the side a second, we'll get to that in the end. But this is going quick so we can get to that. Right, there's the replacements. I've went through them once, I'll go through it again. The link's on there, if not. James, if you can find the link for these, I did put in the description for the video, the schedule. Chuck it in, mate, if anyone asks for it. That'll be a nice one, top man. Um, so we're going from the original 110, and these feel light as a feather, I'll be honest, to these ATV uh, spring and shocks. These are for 49cc motorbikes or ATV vehicles. I thought electric scooter, why not? Uh, 170 pound in weight, not in cost. I think they're 14.99 on Amazon next day delivery. So we're on to a winner anyway because we're not waiting 30 days from AliExpress. The only concern we have is obviously the whole spacing from there to there is spaced for 110 mil shock. We're about to try and fit the 125. And as you can see right now, that's not going to fit. But I'm not worried because if we take the other side out, we can raise the scooter by uh, three quarters of an inch, which will increase the ride height, but increase how much work the spring is going to do, as in how much it's going to compress and retract back again, giving you that more bounce, eating up more of the bumps, basically. So the more ride height we can get out of this safely, the better. So I'm just going to put this back down, go ahead and under the other side, and you'll see the scooter drop down because there's nothing holding it up except the one pin on the swing arm. So, I'm going to do exactly the same on the opposite side, starting with this pin, I'm going to loosen it off, in fact before we do, let's make sure it's actually going to fit width wise, right there's our first problem, it's a bit too wide, let me change the camera, Really too. Right, we're about to squeeze this on. The problem we got, first problem, is that hits there. That's obviously no good. But the originals had spaces. I think they were four mil kicking it out. So the space required for this is only going to be an extra two mil or four mil at best. So that's not a worry just yet. I think we can space that out perfect. Right, back to main camp. Okay, so let me take off the other side and we'll look into that space in now. I think it's going to be fine now. Let's have a look. Nice, Pete. Let's unscrew the one side. Let's get the other one off quickly. Uh, there goes that drop I was telling you about. Watch out for that. Right, so the scooter has got no shocks on it at all. Might have to change the camera angle because it has dipped down a bit. Oh no, that's fine. You can see the sort of plate we can work with. We can go for the normal look. Or the Hugh Jackman. <laughs> I'm calling the Hugh Jack look. Let's have a look. Get the other side off. There goes the spacer. Um, I've pre warmed this side up so not to waste your time. I am learning slowly. Right, there's the other side off. The usual applies to the other side. Bolt, shock, spacer, frame. Okay, so both shocks are off. Nothing's holding this thing up now except the bottom swing arm pin, which is there. I'm going to get a wide angle shot of this once it's connected up. So let's look at our spacing first of all. I'll call out the spaces I use, I'll call out anything extra I add. I'll add it in the description. You can contact me if you need to know exactly what it is. So let's take this off. Let's loosen up the shock slightly. So we've got a bit more play. Contracts a bit more. Not too much though, so it comes off the actual thread. 
I'll do. Right, we want right in facing out so it looks pretty. Yes, we care about it looking pretty. So let's get the original boat first. And originally it have just this spacer. And then I would run through here. But we know it's going to hit in the frame there. So before I put that there, let's avoid taking it back off. Throw on some spaces. M6 hole, 2 mil spaces. I'll get the calipers out and double check now. And if you have a look at the actual bolt, your original one, that's running into the scooter, is really long. On the other side of the locking nylon thread, you've still got about 5 to 10 mil. So you don't need to replace this bolt. The original one will do. And you just fiddle that in there. Okay, one down. Let's turn it all the way in and see if we need to add another spacer. I don't want to go too far out because that wouldn't be too clever. But adding three to six mil extra spacing, I got no issues with that for safety. I'm not even worried about that. Obviously, you wouldn't want to add three inches of spacer. That's just the bench shaft waiting to happen. Oh, the front shocks are coming, mate. I wouldn't be doing the back if I couldn't match the front up. The front shocks are coming. I've got an alternative. Right. So that's on. Right, we got a little... Let's get back to shape cam a second. Let me show you what you're dealing with. Right, this is where we're at. Spin you around this game in. We're perfectly good there. I like that. There's nothing wrong with that. These are chunky spaces. These are not thin, do you know what I mean? Half a penny, half a mil spaces. These are two mil steel spaces. I'm not saying they're expensive. I'm just saying they're solid steel spaces. They're not going to bend or buckle too easily. So that's fine. That one's fine. But there's our next problem. We are without getting the calipers out and going too crazy. I'd say a mill out. So on with another spacer. Let's get the next spacer back on there. We got production value going on tonight, lads. Let's back this off. So as it stands now, we're calling it six mil extra in spacing. And you want to be equal with there to there with your spacing. You don't want shocks bent in or out, the chamfer, etc. You, you want the spacing equal. You want to run in parallel with the wheel. If it looks bent, the chances are you are. Use your eye. Unless you've got a wonky eye. And use your measuring tape. So we'll take it from the two to the three. Now, I want to use something chunky for the last one. Yep, the three of them will do. I'm going to use something a bit bigger a second. I'd like to step up my spacing. Brake cable don't make things easy, but that's life. Let's see if this bolt is still going to be long enough to catch the nylon on the net. It looks perfectly fine. Right, now where are we catching? Absolutely nowhere. Right, we're running free. Let's get this back one up in the air. Where's the original bolt? Now, already I can see the original bolt is looking a bit short. <coughs> Let me get my calipers out. Let's get exact with these measurements. The original Kugo bolt is, let me see, I don't know if you can see that, but it's set to 43 mil, that's a bit odd, so it's 43 mil in length, yeah, the calipers are fine, that's an odd bolt, but there you go, 43 mil in length instead of 45, or 40. That is already not going to be long enough. So it's a hardware job. 
you're going to need 50 mil bolts replacements of the originals. So I've got a few on hand. These are a bit longer. These are 75 mil instead of 50. I was going to cut them down. It's not worth the effort when there's a hardware shop down the road that I can pick up two in the morning. So in the description we'll put 50 mil bolts for the rear. We need two, one for left, one for right. So we'll go back to the original, how they add it. We'll stick the bolt into the back. We'll put the original spacer back, which is that one. Then we need to add equal amount of spacers to this side that we put on that side, which was 6 mil. So let's grab 6 mil worth of spacer. It's nice that you can rotate this around as well. So there's that. Where's another one? Six mil of spacer. Now we gotta lift the scooter up to guide it into the hole there. So here's the fun bit. This is where we get to see the new ride height. This is where you laugh or cry. This cry, this cry. Okay, that went well. Let's try that again. Let's put the spacers back. That's one disadvantage of using a table. Let's try that again. Am I going to lift this up? Okay. Going well. It's going very well. Let me screw this in. Oh, I've missed out the original steel collar. So it went well. Let me just keep the same height a second. With one hand. Not like I've done this before. And then add the spaces. There you go. Oof. Not stressful. And I'm holding the scooter up mine to one hand. Right, that looks a lot better. Let's drive that in. And hey presto. There's a rough looker. Obviously I need to bolt that right in. Put the nylon locking nut on this side. And do exactly the same on the opposite side. But voila. That needs a test drive. Let me zoom back out so you can see the whole scooter as a whole. So yeah, the back end looks jacked, but obviously when you put your weight on it, that's going to level it back out again, and then it's going to suck up the bumps a lot more than the original dampeners. That rear mug I gotta go. The rear mug got definitely gotta go. Okay, that looks better. I'm happy with that so far. Any complaints? Any complaints at all? Any questions? Let me show you a few concerns I do have about the original design, not this. Let me just change back the shaky cam a second. Some concerns. Let's have a look. First concern is the original bolts that went through had nylon locking nuts on the side to capture the bolt. So great. Compression is lovely. That works, it always has worked, worked for hundreds of years. hundred years. Anyway, same for that side. Now when it comes to the way they attach this section, they've just threaded into a 5mm frame. Granted it's steel, but it's just a thread going into a 5mm frame. I am seriously considering adding a locking nut to this left, and especially this right, which leaves a huge gap. 
that's just begging for a lock inlet on the other side of where the pin goes just to lock it in is just how it should be um, it definitely shouldn't be swinging the bolt should never be moving the actual shock should be pivoting around the bolt the bolt should never move but it should be locked into something the way they've got it now is not too keen so I will be using locking bolts on them but yeah it's a better improvement let me just zoom in the down here a second what's this well, I found the use for the 100 lithium cells I got spare 13S independent BMS booster sack uh, booster packs to fit alongside the original battery inside the shell of the Kugel M4 I was hoping to wire one up tonight show you a bit of spot welding etc um, I made the cages I don't like just wrapping them up in tape like they do it's just not good I like to put them in ABS hard cages so they're protected and shockproof um, size wise some of you got small batteries, some of you got big batteries, that's why I've done it this way, so I can stack for enough space, or what space you got. But if you had that space, that could slot into the original shell of your Kugel base, that'd give you an extra 5 amp hours to your original battery, and it costs less than Alibaba, that's for sure. But yeah, I was hoping to rig one of these up tonight to show you, and obviously heat shrink wrap it, etc. But I'm trying to charge up 100 lithium cells and it's not going too quickly right now. Yeah, I could use spring washer, mate. Split washer, anything like that. Go with it. You keep the compression up, but I'm just using what I've got around you. Also, I do want red ones, so I might just spray these red. Let me get back to main cam a second. So anyway, that's that, left and right. That's the batteries I'm working on. Um, that's going to be a good one. And I've also got this as a special request. It's probably only going to be applicable to one man in the chat. But here you go, mate. Here's a quick brief of your new braking system. This is what I meant by setting it up for connectors, so it leaves you just to screw down terminals. I'll be using them mate, so it's nice and easy. Um, I'll build them up onto miniature PCB boards. I'll cut them down so they're only about that big for each one. And you can just go past them out to your friends there mate. But I'll let you use your controller in high level braking mode etc. You know the score with that. But yeah, I'll call that jacked. So I'll repeat the process on the other side. There's no point in sitting through that because it's literally one, two bolts. I'm going to take a few pictures before anything else happens now. And I'll post all the pictures in detail um, with the washers circled, the bolt replacement circled for this one. Um, let me see what size you need. I'm pretty sure it's 50 mil. I'll double check now. Let me see. 50 mil is going to be a bit of extreme. It's going to be a 45 mil bolt for this side, 45 for the other side. So that's the only two replacements you need. Should cost you a pound at best. So yeah, I'll list all that up for you lads. Um, any other questions? Since there's a few of you watching, I'm going to be posting this up onto YouTube as well. So I was trying to keep it brief. But um, we are getting to the front section as well. The shocks on there. Um, there's a few options of doing that. There's upgrading existing shocks for increased height, or there's my preferred option, taking away the original Kugel folding mechanism and swapping it out for a Pro. Uh, it involves detaching all of this, taking the plastic front cover off. There's a base plate you can get that attaches there that brings it up into a circle stem. Then you can pick wherever you want suspension-wise. That would also increase the height. We're going to get around to these few things tonight on the lay while it goes. But if anyone's looking for battery upgrades as well, little booster packs. 
I can make these 30 nest cells and stack them one on top of each other till you've got as many as you want. All in ABS cases, all ready to go. So I think I'll, that's me for the night, lads. Um, anyone got any questions, leave them in the chat or just message me. And I'll do my best to get back to you. Right. Nice one.